All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Beaky back once again with another press conference reaction. It's 2017 and it's time for TGS. And of course, before the gates open up to let gamers go into and play these new games in Tokyo, Sony's going to go ahead and do their press conference. And it's time for me to check it out and see my reactions live. Some of you guys will already know the big news, but it's time I see what I think about it right here. Let's get into it. My name is Morita of Sony Interactive Entertainment Japan Asia. Although everybody must be quite busy because the Tokyo Game Show will start soon, I'm so happy to see so many persons here. Thank you. Also, thanks to all the game fans joining through the internet. <laughs> Before the opening of the Tokyo Game Show 2017, two days from now, we would like to provide you today with the latest news about the PlayStation. Alright, let's see what they got to share with us. Since their launch last year, the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 4 Pro have been tremendously popular among the users. As of June 11, the cumulative total of uh, more than 60.4 million PlayStation Woo! units have been sold throughout the world. That's by the end of the year, good, man. Hardware and peripheral uh, lineup uh, enhancements taking place in Japan. The PS4 is going to beat the PS3. I already see it. On November the 3rd, see through. I want it. Will appear. Choose your favorite color and enjoy the PlayStation with family and friends. I love clear cases, so I would love to get one. On October the 19th, finally the Gran Turismo Sport will be launched. At the same time, the PlayStation 4 Gran Turismo Sport Limited Edition will be launched using the special two-tone color specifications. Please try the VR-enabled special model to experience ultra-realistic driving. I love Gran Turismo, but I think that console looks whack. Uh, Could have made it look a little cooler for Gran Turismo. Launch in November 3rd of the latest in the popular title series, Call of the Duty World War II. The PlayStation 4 Call of Duty World War II Limited Edition will be launched. All Call of Duty fans should enjoy the world view of the new special limited edition. I think so Nintendo does the best special edition console sometimes. Even Microsoft does the better. A wide variety of unique titles for the PlayStation have appeared. This momentum will continue. Attractive titles essential to the PlayStation will appear. And those are some good games. We'll have even a broader lineup of titles. Rather than try to explain this in words, please enjoy the visuals. All right, we should get a little montage right here. First, the latest in the popular series. Here are the titles that will appear from this autumn and into 2018. So yeah, Call of Duty is going to be a big game for Sony, and I'm not surprised that they are promoting in Japan as well. It's coming out in a few months. I mean, it's usually the biggest game of the year. I don't blame them for doing it. It's something you would want to have on stage first. I would have still prefer to see a Sony-made and developed game first. Nino Kuni, I had a review of this on my website. I had somebody review the first one. It's a game I never got to play myself, but my reviewer did say that they loved the game. It's, it's a beautiful looking art style, man. Like, there are some video games out there you want to look at and just say how pretty it looks, but you just don't want to play. This is one of the ones I want to watch my friends play more than I want to jump in and play it myself. This is where it all begins. Our kingdom starts here, today. 
Like, I'm sure we all have the, those games where we like watching our friends play them. And I'm not even talking about, like, watching somebody wa let's play it on YouTube. I mean, like, directly sit next to a friend on the couch or, like, a significant other and watch them play. I like that. Like, this is one of those games for me. It's not something I would sneak out on YouTube. It's not something I really want to play myself. But I respect, like, I love when I see people enjoy games like that. It's, like, really fun. It's, uh, like, you know, I can help them out make the decisions if I want. <laughs> Oh, is this um, Earth Defense Force or uh, what's that damn game called? Yeah, with the bugs. If this is on the PS4, man, those graphics are bad. I mean, this game never had great graphics to begin with. <laughs> those are some bad PS4 graphics, man. That's actually almost unbelievably bad. But these games were all about the gameplay. I've played them before. Not in a long time, but I have. You can see clipping and all type of craziness. Yeah, Earth Defense Force Five. Okay, I knew it was like I was, some, I was like so sort of, a second. I I almost thought I was like thinking like was it really Earth Defense Force? But yeah, it is. And as we know, unfortunately, it's not a new trailer. But yeah, next year this is gonna be the realest thing ever. Oh man, this is gonna be so great. I can't wait. Like, it's just. Uh, this trailer just evokes motions with, like, the, the scene right here, the music. Like, it doesn't give away too much, but it just tells you that you're gonna be drawn into this time. Like, the world that John Marston. Oh, so good. Maybe because I remember the days of sitting on the couch with my uncle uh, when I was younger watching Western and watching all the good Clint Eastwood movies. I mean, the Westerns hold a special part in my life. I don't know about kids these days, they really grow up and watch Westerns unless their older family members show them that type of stuff. But I, I had that experience. So Westerns do, does hold a special part in my heart. I, I do like Western games and I like the Western themes for movies as well. So I can't wait. Is this Monster Hunter Worlds? Or is this a Dynasty Warrior game? Dynasty Warriors. Or Samurai Warriors. I'm not sure which one it is. And I'm not complaining at all because I'm sure as hell getting um Hyrule Warriors. Okay, that's kinda new. It's gonna be Dynasty Warriors. The one of the worst things possible, this has nothing to do with Sony, but that with the Samurai Warriors, not Samurai Warriors, uh, Hyrule Warriors and um, uh, F Fire Emblem Warriors, sorry, the game I'm against Fire Emblem Warriors, is that those don't have online. I mean, the same developers making them, but we get these ones for the PS4, Xbox One, and these come with the online co-op and all that stuff, but we don't get that with the, the Nintendo versions. It always bugged me. I've had a lot of fun playing with this with friends. These games are super fun with friends, man. Yeah, that's a Dynasty Warriors um, logo. Koi Tempo. Like, come on. Get online. Early 2018. Like, some, some players would say that's always the same. Big old logo. Alright, that's, that's at least better than the Gran, Gran Turismo one. Nope, <laughs> this is for me. I told them kids I'm not buying them anything more related to Minecraft. I actually watched the first episode of this, like, you know, because I wanted to see if it was any good. I like the Telltale games, but 
I don't think they made an interesting story for people who are not into Minecraft. Maybe if they did make an interesting story, I would be into it. But I tried to. I really wanted to get into it. But it's also, it's not like I hate Minecraft or anything in the, in the sense. I just don't think it's that fun of a game personally. But I understand why the kids like it. I understand why certain millions of people like it for the creativity and building what you can do. I just think there's other games that do stuff similar to Minecraft and just, for one, look better. Because you can't say Minecraft graphics is the best looking thing ever. Shit, this looks half decent, but still ain't that great. But if your imagination is there, you can make all types of things with Minecraft, and that is impressive. People making Star Trek ships, computers, low basic computers, and it's kind of cool. But I really wanted more from this. I really wanted more from this Telltale thing, and I just was not, I was not interested. And I don't even think this was meant for kids. Like, I, I think the story was a little bit more complex than that. I just don't think they made an overall that interesting story for what I saw from the first um, episode of the Minecraft story mode. And uh, this is coming from somebody who's been generally very happy with the Telltale games of late. The Minecraft story mode season 2 that you have just seen is scheduled to be launched on the October the 12th and we will start taking orders at the PlayStation Store from September the 28th. When you place an order in advance, you can get 25% discount to take this uh, take advantage of this opportunity. That's a good discount. And please enjoy this great adventure. We have more titles to announce. Many titles loved by game enthusiasts will be appearing on PS4. Like a 25% discount on a pre-order on a digital game is fairly decent, if that's what he was trying to say. Team Ninja, Final Fantasy 30th Anniversary. Hmm. Team Ninja. Dissidia! This is Dissidia. It has to be Dissidia. Could it be anything but Dissidia? Yep. I have three friends who's about to go crazy over this. Like, they play this game non stop. Like, at the time when it came out on the PSP, I couldn't get a big handle off the controls, just off the bat, but, um, you know, you know, you mature as a gamer and whatever, and I played a bunch of different other PSP games that was like it, and I was like, okay, it's kind of cool. When they did, when I watched my friends doing the special moves, I always thought that was kind of cool. The graphics look a lot nicer, so I'm, I'm guessing this is a PS4 title. I'll be very surprised if it's like a PS Vita title at all. But why wouldn't it? It could be. It could be a PS Vita and a PS4. Could even be a PS3 as well. The models definitely look like higher res, though. Oh yeah, it's PS4. You wouldn't be able to have it. Noxus and his pals in here if it wasn't. The city. 2018. Yeah, my friends are going to go crazy over this game. They were big fans. Uh, I was going to say Last Guardian. But nope, Shadow of Colossus. Let's go. I'm ready for it. I'm a big Shadow of Colossus fan, guys. I'll get this game again looking even prettier. I am so with it. For a game with like no real deep voice acting, it's just like motions, man. You don't want to have to kill these big beasts, but sometimes things need to be get done. Shadow of the Colossus. Plus I. Like, man, good game and memories. Like, so many teams just make some games that are just so phenomenal in the, 
in more than just the way of their gameplay, they're artistic in a way. Like this, like I'm getting emotional watching this right now. Like just my memories of the. This is why some gamers have such a growing steep um, love of past PlayStation titles. It's stuff like this that just gets ingrained into you. This is the art of a game. It's not just the gameplay. It's not just the music. It's the whole experience. It's just so great. It's so delivered so well. I love it. Another company that does it well as well, of course, is Nintendo. But they have a different feel for it. There is more or less a family family engraved from you little kids playing the Mario games, maybe. Because, you know, like a lot of parents, when they're going to have their kids, one of the first type of games they show them are going to be Mario games. It's that easy to pick up, fun to play, quick to learn, and they usually have co-ops. Like, I wouldn't, like, you know, start a kid off with Shadow of the Colossus. Oh, this game. Um, yeah. I played the, did I play the, yeah, I played the demo on this. And I didn't get that far. Not that I hated anything. There was some reason. I stopped. Yeah. I, yeah. This is one of those games, I mean, as cool as coming out of PS4 or whatever, and I'm sorry for Sony, I want this on my Switch. <laughs> That's the platform I want this on. I want this on a mobile platform. I think this came out just when I wasn't playing my, uh, my Vita that much anymore. So I don't have my Vita anymore. I actually eventually sold it. And it's not that I hated anything, just that somebody else in the family has a Vita. And I said if I ever needed a Vita, I would use theirs. And I still have the Vita, the Vita TV, that thing. This is Final Fantasy IX. Well, I guess my Final Fantasy friends are super happy right now. I'm truthfully, I'm not that big of a fan of the song, but that's just my personal taste. I'm usually a bigger fan of some of the songs around the Final Fantasy games themselves, what they feature in the trailers. Just this one. Like, this is not gonna, I'm not gonna buy this, but I have, I know people who will. And that's fine. That's fine. I mean, why, why are we surprised that Square Enix is going to remake some of their older titles? It's kind of not surprising at all in some way. I have no clue what this is, but I'm going to guess dating sim. Yeah. Right? They're vampires? Uh, a vampire dates him? Or maybe it's a hacker slash, you just never know. It's gonna be number one in the United States PSN store. I doubt it. <laughs> this is such a horrible job by not showing any gameplay. I'm so sorry. I only could assume what this is based on my knowledge of Japan. It's some type of dating sin and maybe there's some RPG elements thrown in in there I have no clue I'm gonna have to look up some some more if I want to know we're probably gonna get some PlayStation uh, VR titles I still don't have a PSVR but at some point I want to get one star
This is where my lack of reading Japan, uh, Japanese is not... Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. They solved that for me real quick. <laughs> I was going to say, I make a really bad reaction when I can't even assume what the game's name is. But they told me for it. Coming 919. For PlayStation 4. What is this? On this On battlefield. This battlefield. It's real hardcore. Oh, please don't be the Metal Gear thing. Dust and the bonds are intertwined. No, Metal Gear graphics are a little, a little better than this. Oh, Gundam. Complete your mission. Oh, these games. Okay, okay. I haven't played a Gundam game since PlayStation 2. Mobile Suit Gundam Battle Operation 2. I will be truthful, I never knew there was a Battle Operation 1. And if I did know in some way back in my head and I just forgot, that just means that I never paid much attention to the first one. So I can't say if it's good or bad. I'm just gonna guess if it's coming from Namigo Bandai, probably just a wave base, like kind of like a Dynasty Warrior might be. Because haven't they had those Dynasty, or maybe I'm mixing them all up. Because haven't they had the Dynasty Warriors type Gundam games in the past? Yeah, this is what I was thinking. So, so here are the PSVR titles. Show they're gonna show off Skyrim. Heartbeat is kind of intimidating. I really actually want to play this game. Eel Flight. It's on the Vive, but it's a Ubisoft game. It costs too much money for me to justify buying it, man. It costs way too much money. I can't justify it. I'm still waiting for Resident Evil to come out on Vive. Unfortunately, the PS3 is one of those things like, I, at this point, I would need to be a rich gamer to uh, to really afford it and the game. Like, it's one thing to get the system, but I can't afford. Like, I'm I'm having a hard time getting games from paying for games for my Vive. It's like you know, I can't justify buying just any crap game for the Vive. If I buy a Vive game, I have to really want to play it, or I really would want to show it to my friends, or it has to be the right deal. It's hard enough to afford regular $60 games and the, on jump on like a $40 VR title that might be iffy or short. I just need more money, I guess. That's, a, that's the truth. Almost a year has passed after the launch of PlayStation VR and it is proving to be very popular among users indeed. For further momentum, Gran Turismo Sports with VR mode and No Heroes Allowed VR and other titles will appear next month and we'll have a larger supply of PSVR for this. In order to get more people to experience PlayStation VR, in the PlayStation VR camera, bundled version will be launched on October 14th with okay. the new price of 44,980 yen. We'll have an even greater number of dedicated PSVR contents. Please take this opportunity to leap into the world of PlayStation VR. So I don't know the pricing right there because I'm not going to do a quick conversion, but that basically means that they're going to have the PS PlayStation camera. The newer version, not this one, this is the older version, the new one surround. It's gonna come in the box and say they have to buy the headset by itself, probably for the same price. Which is what they should have been doing for the beginning, bundle everything together. You know, funny enough, I actually wanna try this Final Fantasy fishing thing.
Horror games in VR are something, I'm telling you guys. Horror games are cool. I would love to try Ace Combat. I wish there was like an event I could go to and I could try to Ace Combat on PlayStation um, VR. Dinosaurs, okay. Okay, big ass beavers. I wasn't expecting that. No, it's not. So are they just hunting dinosaurs? I'm kind of confused. VR title. This is one of those VR titles I probably would not play. I don't like how it looks at all. I think too many developers forget that they need to... I understand having voice actors and writing a deep story takes a long time, but people don't realize that like, storytelling is probably one of the best things to do in VR because you can help focus people's attention in a specific direction with the way the levels are designed, even though they're turning their head. And like that immersion when you're in an environment and talking to somebody who's this, who seems like the same height as you and all that, it really could be very immersive. But so many VR games just try to be, I hate using the word gimmick sometimes, but more or less arena shooters. Let's say that. I don't even know if that's a cult. It's really a gimmick. It's just a thing we see a lot on the Vive, on the Rift, on the, you know, PSVR. You got a selection of guns and you just shoot until you clear a wave and then go on to the next level, next enemies. Like that's come mundane, but I guess we're going to have to wait until... We could get developers to put in money to build a story, build something interesting. I mean, some of the more interesting stuff have been horror games, but it's just because horror games sometimes can leave out some of the details and still be kind of fun. So this is not a problem just of Sony's VRs. It's a problem of a lot of VR titles. And I'm not trying to say there isn't story-based stuff. It's just that I really wish it was a majority instead of, the, instead of not. This looks cool! Zone of the Henders, yeah. Konami putting out video games in 2017? Who knew? <laughs> Anubis, Zone of the Enders. I'll give Sony some credit. Yo, like, Sony, one thing, man. Just trailers after trailers, game after game. Even if all the games are not for me, there's gonna be games for somebody. To these titles, 
popular smartphone game that was made into a movie this spring will be on PSVR 2018. Furthermore, PSVR will expand into music and video entertainment through PlayStation Network. So we're probably going to get like 3D... Uh, So I'm just gonna say this is pretty cool. I'm gonna skip ahead when I edit this and upload it to YouTube. I'm... With Japan Studio VR Music Festival and VR Digital Theater, you can enjoy game music title as if you are in a concert hall. I think this is awesome. I would use this. Symphony Japan 23rd concert held in May. The various titles produced by Japan Studio were played, and you have just listened to uh, some of them. From tomorrow, September the 20th, one month ahead of general audience, the VR Music Festival will be available for PS Plus subscribers. Grammar's Orchestra concert to be enjoyed. Furthermore, the Asahi newspaper uh, will start uh, distributing video, uh, video services called News VR. You can select Why not? a genre such as news, culture, sports, among others. You can enjoy 360 videos and panoramic still images. You will feel like you are a uh, reporter in the field sometimes i put this on just to watch netflix sometimes it's cool just to be in the room in my own private theater watching netflix on a huge screen like i don't have a 70 inch tv but it's cool to pretend like i do when i have the headset on video in virtual reality we will explore all the possibilities so that the vs a playstation vr will give you the experience you never imagined so like PlayStation having this PlayStation video VR stuff is all smart. It's all a smart move, guys. Now the PlayLink series will have been drawing so much attention in international market. Uh, smartphone and uh, uh, tablets are connected to PS4 and used as a controller. It's a new way of enjoying games. I really should try this with my friends. I hang out with my friends enough that we definitely probably could do this. Like those playing games do look fun. We just haven't done it. Me and my friends are gonna like this. This would be awesome to stream. It's like a quantum gene, like they will make the graphics good, you pick a little choice. Because we already played the Telltale games together and picked the choices. We like stuff like this. I want the in I want the American version of this so I can hear what this is about. Hidden agenda. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, yep, I want, yeah, yep, yep. <laughs> As you see in the hidden agenda, maximum of six gamers can play simultaneously in this suspense. I have five people who can play. Selection option can change the storyline. Mm -hmm. You can enjoy with your friends, uh, bringing smartphones and, and tablets so that you can enjoy the new experience of a PS4. Now we would like to introduce what we are doing to expand the entertainment uh, experience at the Sony Group. Animax. The Animax on PlayStation uh, of Animax Broadcast Japan will be reinvented in December. Uh, this is going to be the 24-hour animation-only TV channel for PS4 users. The older programs uh, can be watchable 
either on time shift or uh, on video on demand. You can also enjoy the exclusive titles, game originated animations, among others. It is a fusion between the uh, channel broadcasting and also video on demand. Please enjoy Animax on PlayStation. They bought Funimation too. We also have uh, new initiatives since last year, Shogakkan's uh, Koro Koro comic, and also with Sony Music and Aniplex. That we started Kids Star Project for younger kids. Uh, we are using the characters so that we want to expand the attraction of a PlayStation to children. So we'd like to share part of I'm, that. I'm just saying. So please. Please look at the characters. The character has one a bullet and a, a band-aid in his head. I mean, like, I understand it's for kids, but that's kind of... It's his head is bleeding blood, and there's a bullet hole through one of the characters' chests. But, you know, it's still a cute little fashion, so... Look at minions. They do some s crazy stuff. <laughs> or rabbits. Me playing rap... <laughs> What the heck? What am I looking at? What is this? It was funny, but what is this? What? What? What's that? It was just... What? <laughs> now, we would like to get back to the PlayStation 4 titles, which we have enhanced even more, and we would like to provide you with new information about this. Now, look forward to the wide variety of new titles appearing first on PlayStation 4. Yuriya wa... ...mou kono yo ni inai... ...mou Fist of the North North Star, I think it is. One day I should actually watch this anime. I've seen so much like clips from it. So many pages of the manga online. I'll probably like it. Yo, I can find some- I can see some people loving this thing. This is just the right type of crazy for some people. This is a good- it's a well done trailer. It definitely is going to sell to the people who want to buy a game like this. As I can't say I'm a, like I'm a fan of the anime, I'm just going to let it be. <laughs> D3 when we last had peace. War is all we know. War never changes. Wait, wrong franchise. This endless war. But we fight. Something will change. The enemy is too strong. We're growing weary. While they keep evolving. Even now. We're beyond the breaking point. But it's still too soon to despair. If you have a weapon, fight alongside us. A 
as long as we're here. That city is wrecked. <laughs> Unforeseen enemies have arrived. What does that mean? Ah, Earth Defenders is always out there. <laughs> Yo, that little kid was looking into your soul. Why am I not surprised it's an Atlas game? Vanillaware. Okay. Okay. I'm already liking the art style. Really feeling the art style. They're running in the wrong direction. Hmm. I seriously like how this looks. It just looks different than, you know. I like how I just like how it looks. I wanna know more. If if anything a trailer can do, it makes you wanna know more. That trailer makes me wanna know more. Quantum Dream. So day one buy for me guys. I know some people are not a fan of their games, but i I'm buying David Cage games. He tries at least. Doesn't always work out the best way, but he tries to make a story with consequences are at least interests chaos. Really allowing your characters to die. Like, this story could be as simple as androids become aware and humans start segregating them. Who knows? You know? Or androids revolt and start killing humans. Who knows? But it should be damn well more complex than that. Like, I just love the water in the background. Thanks, Zeker, for stopping by in chat. Thanks, everybody watching in chat. I'll be streaming stuff like this on Twitch from time to time. Detroit become human. What? Will becoming human be more pre appropriate? Why do androids want to become human? I'm gonna get so many copyright strikes on this video, it's unbelievable. Sega, Atlas, Call of Duty, music. <laughs> No! 
I wouldn't play this if this was free! Just no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> Even if this is a free game automatically downloaded on my PS4, I wouldn't bother. <laughs> That's an example of a trailer that turns me off. Where's where are Soul Calibur Six? Yo, I want is there Soul Calibur Six in this? I'll get hyped. I'm a big Soul Calibur fan. I want to play with Nightmare again. I'm all for it. Taki, all that Ivy. Let's do it. If there's one thing you get from this press conference, mechs. There are lots of mech games. Square Enix. Okay. Well, I guess you gotta wait for more. That was just a teaser. Left Alive. Okay, Square Enix. That shit looks so much like a freaking uh, Metal Gear poster. What do we have in here? I wonder if we're gonna see a, like a little teaser trailer for Kojima's game or anything for that. Probably not. Probably won't get anything for Death Stranding. I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't. That game probably got like a while of development to go, and I don't mind it going away and coming back at some point later on. I see this is it's actually so great how well this is produced because so many of the Tokyo Game Show trailers haven't been off screen like this. They've been all direct feed right to our faces. Like, t uh, the people who do the E3 one always want to show the crowd and shit like that. Like, like we really want to see the crowd that much. Like, they've been just giving us direct feed of exactly what's on the screen. That's probably because the auditorium is not like some huge expensive thing as E3. But I, I was expecting to show this at one time, Monster Hunter World. It's one of the few Monster Hunters that actually looked interesting for me to try. Last month of the game I played was maybe it was five or what was it four on the 3DS? Whatever the last one on the 3DS was. Just couldn't get that far into it. Some of these characters do look like they could be in Soul Calibur. <laughs> Same funny running. Woo! That guy looks cool! That's awesome! I will admit, the Monster Hunter trailers always look really cool though. It's not even like it's just a first time thing. In general, the Monster Hunter trailers actually look pretty badass. It's always come down to the moment and moment of talent gameplay and stuff that, that, that usually turns me off. But like I said, I'm still willing to give the Monster Hunter France has a try as more games come out. I, w I would like... Look, there's, there are always game series that you wish you were into and really wish you get hooked in. Monster Hunter is one of those ones I really wish I was into, like, hardcore to, like, some people who are. It's like, it's like how a lot of people are into Hearthstone, but like, I don't have no interest in really getting into Hearthstone. I would have interest in getting into this. And there's those games in between. Like, I would try uh, League of Legends, why not? If it was just like, if I felt like downloading it one day. 
I really wish I was just like I got into the 3DS version of Monster Hunter when it came out. I wanted to love it. I really did. But I probably have never sold like what did I do with the game? Did I sell it or I don't know. I got rid of I never got rid of a 3DS game so quickly. I think I played it one day. I was like, nah, I'm done. We have uh, Mr. Ryozo Tsujimoto of Capcom. Welcome back. My name is Tsujimoto, the producer of Monster Hunter World. Well, we're s we've seen some wonderful visuals shown for the first time here. It seems like the development is going smoothly. Yes, it's going very well. And so, I think that uh, we can provide you a very good game. And we're work working hard together to make it. At the end, uh, there was some visuals of monsters that we're seeing for the first time. So yes, cool looking indeed. one. This is the first time we've shown this. The monster's name is Neruri Gante. And this is going to be one of the package main monsters. If we look at each of the titles, then there were main package monsters, and this time it'll be the Neruri Gante. And in regard to this package uh, monster, Neruri Gante, we've introduced this, and there's another thing that we'd like to convey to you. What's that? Finally, the Monster Hunter World launch date has been decided. And so, please take a look. Ah, January yes. 26. The Monster Hunter World. Thank you very much for the applause. And uh, you may think that it's quite early. At any rate, on January 26, Friday, 2018, this will be made available worldwide simultaneously. Oh, wow. And, uh, the package and the download digital versions will be offered. And aside from the packaged uh, one, in the digital version, there's going to be a digital deluxe version. Of course there is. And the one I never get. We have these uh, <laughs> armor uh, items uh, that will change. And uh, there's going to be hairstyles and gestures and so on that will be added as special items in the digital deluxe version. And in the package version here. I don't even know if I was a rich, if I was a rich gamer. Edition. I still don't think I would buy digital deluxe. The main monster that we introduced. Maybe collector's Neruri edition because it comes with something well, physical. Faithfully reproduced and maybe some digital stuff as well, but. And furthermore. The art I'm not, I the can't even remember how many digital deluxe versions well I've bought of games. Prepared. Probably this so few. Maybe two. And hey, maybe uh, five over my edition life? Prepared. I'm thinking like probably two. And then. I can't even name them. For all of these <laughs> versions, <laughs> if you uh, uh, reserve orders on the uh, dig digital version, as well as some for the package version, we have the uh, Origin Series armor item that is prepared. Upa, chest runaway. And we also have a uh, fair wind charm prepared in the digital version and in limited quantities. This will be available in the packaged version as well. And the origin series uh, items... I hate everything about this! ...since the first Monster Hunter World. And we have special armor that has special features to it. And we'll start taking reservations... Yeah! Pre-order bonus! DLC! Awesome! They could have spent Please like a press release to IGN to tell this information. It would be nice for him to talk about some of the new cool features in the game. Place orders. Thank you very much. Place your really pre-orders. How about this? Nobody watching this video who's interested in the game, don't pre-order it. Wait till the day the game comes out and buy it if you like the reviews and what other people who you trust think about the game. Don't give them your money early. Just because they wasted time on that instead of showing more of the game. Oh, is this the third special edition of PS4? Make this one badass. Come on. That's a lot better than the Gran Turismo. See what I'm talking about? The PlayStation 4 Pro Special Edition will be available. It's the Leolins, the World Leolis Edition. 
We hope that many, many articles will be written about this. Mr. Tsujimoto, tell us about your... Yeah, like, yeah, Zeker, you're so right. Like, what's up with that? Which that you really focused upon? Please provide us with your comment. Yes, for the PlayStation 4, we have a new world of Monster Hunter World prepared. And with that in mind, we have looked at the main monsters of the past. There was the Leolets that was a monster that appeared throughout This is the first part of the, the press conference I legitimately want to skip. For this, uh, I just don't want to hear this guy in his Pro. press conference and, original design has been prepared. and selling people extra so stuff outside the, of the game uh, right now. Design, PlayStation 4 Pro, before the launch of the Monster Hunter World, this will be available in limited quantities starting from December 7th. But I do understand some people are going to want the special edition. The Maybe this is the edition to Monster convince people Hunter to buy it. World will be on January 26, uh, midnight. And uh, like uh, this, the others, uh, we will start uh, accepting orders from uh, noon tomorrow for like the hardware, like the software. Hmm. Uh, we've announced the launch date. And as we head towards the launch, we would like to do our utmost to be able to provide you with this wonderful experience. So we'd like to, to request for your support. And there'll be a lot of information that will be provided at the Tokyo Game Show, so please uh, look forward to this. Launch a beta! Come on, do a beta! Do a beta! Do a beta of Monster... That's what they could have announced. A beta for Monster Hunter World to get people like me who's still on the edge to get a chance to play the game and convince us to buy the game. Your stupid digital deluxe edition and your pre-order bonus ring and stuff is not going to get me to buy your game. We have just heard the launch date of the Monster Hunters. That's me though. Again, thank you very much for the tremendous support from the software producers. We have uh, shared with you the latest title of the existing series and also new titles appearing on the PlayStation 4 and also completely new titles. I hope you enjoy them. At the Tokyo Game Show 2017 PlayStation booth, the facility best suited for you to enjoy PS4 titles in the PS4 Pro are already provided. So for the PS Plus subscribers, uh, um, I'm not sure if this is going to be exclusive. Zika, I'm gonna have to look that up. I didn't. If it was, I didn't. I missed when they said it would be exclusive. I don't think World is going to be exclusive. It says it's going to be launching worldwide that uh, from 29th of September, Friday, you can download uh, from the PS Store for the three titles for the trial. So please refer to the PlayStation official website. Okay. And also the titles which are which will be existed at the 2017 Tokyo Game Show. Uh, we will be also hold the PlayStation Festival uh, from the end of October in Sapporo, Fukuoka, and Osaka. Please come and join us. Okay. I think that's probably it right there. I think that's going to wrap it up. I think that's the press conference, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, wait. To revitalize Japanese game market one more time since the launch of a PS4, this is our obligation to do so for the game lovers. And the member of the team, PlayStation team has been working very hard toward that goal. You will be evaluating whether we have achieved something for the last three years. But as a team, we always committed ourselves to make a progress towards our goal. However, we are still in the halfway in our journey. We have not arrived at the destination yet. Uh, we want all the games to come to our platform and you can get excited about the game world. You can play it uh, with your children. Uh, we can all play together, compete, 
against each other, and we can also enjoy them playing. There are so many messages that we want to contain. So we want to make a PlayStation as everybody's PlayStation. There I understand so that the Japanese market is so mobile focused these days. They want to get people back into console gaming uh, in Japan. One PlayStation to one home. So many people will enjoy interacting. I do think they need more kid, uh, kids friendly games. Outside like sport titles and neck. And the culture. We really want to take you to the world beyond your imagination. I just mentioned our journey. Our means not just a member of the team, but also the partners and also game lovers and end users of a PlayStation and also the viewers of these uh, uh, events are all included in this journey. I hope that we will, you will join us and uh, complete our journey together. I uh, really want to show you the uh, TV commercial as a summary of this presentation. Uh, this is going to be the end of today's conference. All right. Thank you very much for staying with us until the end of all the uh, presentations. Oh, actually, clap. I like the way they did it. Let's go talk about it real quick, all right? I'm going to have a full review later, but you guys don't really need to see the commercial, so let the commercial be done. All right. So I think their presentation as a whole was actually supremely well done because they made a lot of um, good moves that we saw as mistakes from recent press conferences like at E3 or a lot of times when they like Sony, Microsoft, EA, Ubisoft, they'll pull away from the main screen, the direct feed and show us to crowd and the screen. As a viewer at home, we don't want to see the people sitting in the stair, sitting in the seats while looking at the trailer. We want to see the trailer in big full screen on our monitor. So I'm glad that they actually really focused on showing us the direct feed of Monster Hunter World and stuff like that instead of pulling back. I think that as a presentation was really fun. Also, the one guy who was uh, the head of Sony in the Japanese region, I think he did a fairly good job of hosting. He looked very professional. Uh, I don't think he didn't really smile that much, but I felt he was very genuine about what he said. Now, this is why me even speaking Japanese, I felt he actually had some passion about what he did for Sony and what he did for the PlayStation brand. And his last little speech right there, even being translated, I feel he was very passionate about the PlayStation brand. And he really does want more gamers to get into the PlayStation um, ecosystem in the Japanese market and even around the world because right now as we like i said the japanese market seems to be moving away from home consoles as much uh as not they're moving away from it than how big it was back in the day it doesn't seem like it is as big as it once was yes stuff like the nintendo switch being a home console and a mobile platform is doing well right now but still i would still say the nintendo switch as much as much as nintendo wants to say it's a home console i still say i play my switch 90 percent of the time as an actual mobile device and it is an actual console device and so does my friends who own the switch as well we use it because it's mobile not because it got a dock it and play with the stupid hot ass dock and the thing right now is Sony needs Sony to be able to make people buy consoles and put it into their homes in Japan and play those consoles and stuff that they're doing with like the PlayStation link app where again people could play games together on the couch six of us at one time is eight of us at one time they said um that's pretty awesome and pretty cool is it eight or six sorry for making a mistake on the number right there. that's really cool um that's gonna probably get Japanese gamers together and want to play together but I still think they're mishandling the, the the younger market the age under 12 the under age under 12 market is not like you know the pre-teens market is not focused on enough I think next is a good little set but right now, even my nieces and nephews who, um, you know, have PlayStations, they're still playing the Minecraft. They're still playing the, Plunk, the Splunky. Most of their, their their games that they're getting from the PlayStation market are most of the smaller digital downloads from the indie developers. And that's not a bad thing, but I still think that Sony needs those big blockbuster um, friendly kid games that they had in the past for the PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2. Even the more mascot stuff, it really does it does help. It does help. It works for Nintendo, and I can't say it won't, wouldn't work for Sony as well. Well, I mean, Crash Bandicoot came out and they made a deal with um, Activision, but they still need more than that going into the holiday because that was a game from a few months ago. They need something going into this fall holiday to capture the Japanese audience and the American audience and the European audience for the younger audience to make a kid who's off the age of nine to say, I want a PlayStation because I saw that cool mascot game. I saw that cool kid-friendly game outside of the stuff that we already know that's coming out, like, you know, racing games where kids might be 
into the Gran Turismo, but still not every kid's going to be into like cool racing cars. That's what I'm trying to say there. And not every parent's going to buy their kid Destiny, you know. In fact, I literally took away Destiny from my niece, my nephew's, um, where is it? Here, the copy of Destiny. So, my, my net, one of my nephews is, um, is very young. I would, I don't, whatever. Anyways. His older brother has Destiny playing, and his older brother left Destiny in the PlayStation 4 playing, and I, it upset me seeing them um, playing, that he left it in there, and his younger brother playing a shooting game. And I was like, no, I don't think you're mature enough to play the shooting game, so I took the game away from them completely. It's not that his older brother couldn't play, it's just that, you know what, I don't even want him to play a shooting game around their brothers, because I, as a family member, I'm going to be responsible for how these kids interact online and deal with I just don't want them to be turned into the 12 year old doing cursing you guys out on Xbox Live or PSN I don't want that to happen my family and I think part of the reason why I never became a gamer like that I never became the gamer cursing people out on Xbox Live or PSN is because my mother bought me Scooby Doo games for getting A on my English test you understand there was a trade off there if I wanted the Scooby Doo game for my GameCube I had to get good grades in school or I had to do this or I had to you you know, when I was on a football team, I had to do this. You understand? There was, there was a trade. There's a there was a give and take to everything, right? And if I just let them, you know, they, they got the they got the Destiny bundle, came with Destiny. Yeah, you you one of them might be old enough to play Destiny, but I don't make you you're mature enough to Destiny. I don't think you, I don't think you're mature enough to play that game with the people online. And that's why I think that me playing starting off with the Scooby Doo, the Mario's, the mascot game. I just think the kids market is an important market to focus on for the Sony. And that's where I really wanted to. I got from this. I don't think at E3 and I don't think the Tokyo Game show or in 2017 they've uh, actually focused on that market enough NAC 2 is definitely not enough to really push forward to get those Christmas asking for a PlayStation 4 of course there will be kids asking for the kids who are knowledgeable the kids who go over to their friend's house and see the but I don't think there's that title that's gonna grab the kids in the United States Europe or Japan enough to want to buy access their parents for PS4 for Christmas this year unless they're into those older hardcore pro titles or they're gonna ask for a PS4 with something like a, a Minecraft in, in a sense all right guys just wanted to bring that up there guys it's like giving a kid uh giving a GTA kid, like oh yeah I would never let the little kids play like a GTA or something like that it's just not it's just not it's not for them but I mean if you think your kids are, are your family members is uh, mature enough for that, it's fine. I'm just talking about from Sony's standpoint of view is that I think they need to focus on that market because that part of the market is something that they are missing out on. When I was a kid and I was I uh, had a, a N64 because my cousin had one, I was using it with him. I was telling my mom constantly like I wanted a um a PS1. I want a PS1. I want. My mother never got me a PS1. You no, know my mother did. My mother got me a N64. The Lion King game, I know it wasn't the greatest game ever, and some other Mario games, kid-friendly games. She got me a Super not N64, I mean a Super Nintendo, right? She got me a Super Nintendo, the console before the Super Nintendo, and I loved it. And that's what I grew up on really playing. The Super Nintendo was my my own first personal console. That's what I got. Went to a Toys R Us, I remember, and that was when I started off. Then I eventually got the PS1, and I eventually got, but I can't say I'm all good. I went over a friend's house who his parents allowed him to buy Resident Evil and Resident Evil 2, and we there little kids getting my butt scared off playing the Resident Evil games. It was a hell of a fun. And, you know, I still it didn't turn me into a psychotic cursing people out on PSN or Xbox Live as I grew up in my life. But I said kids these days, they're so... They, they, they don't have it like how we had it back in the day where... You know, a lot of there was a lot of games focused at kids. The, the gaming industry was mainly targeted a lot towards kids. Nowadays, the gaming industry started to target more times teen and older adults, and up from twenty to thirty-five. That's where a lot of the game industry is targeted: the people with the money, the people willing to buy the market transaction. And I think that Sony still, as good as they might have me in my twenties right now, I feel like they're lacking out on games for the younger market. Because right now, Christmas is coming up. You know, the holidays are coming up, Hanukkah. Uh, uh, Kwanzaa, whatever, whatever you celebrate, and I got to think about what kind of things I'm going to get to my nieces and nephews and what they're going to want to play, and one of the things I usually get every day, I usually try to, every year, I usually try to get them a nice little kit game, and they already got the Minecraft, they already got them the Star Wars, um, a Star Wars game, I already got them the Lego games, 
but there's nothing coming from Sony directly that I could really say, here, get this game. Even Microsoft, in a sense, I don't... Like, Cuphead is coming out for Microsoft, but that game is probably a little too hard for them. Yesterday, my um, nephew came from school. He um, said he did his studying for his test and everything like that, and he went to go play Epic Mickey on the PlayStation 3. Mind you, he got a PS4 from his father... Um, for his birthday, but he turned on the PS3 that I have in the living room, like, you know, for the family. He turned on the, um, he came over my house, turned on the PlayStation 3, and I was playing Epic Mickey, because that was a fun kids game, playing with the Mickey. And that's what I'm trying to say. It may not seem it, the kids might, he might like Destiny, but he still loves Epic Mickey. And that's what I love about gaming. I think we need more stuff that... And that market's undervalued these days. And I think that's where Sony and Microsoft are messing up. And Nintendo's very keen and focused on getting people's attention. Making their, ga their games appeal to wider audiences. Splatoon's appeals to me as much as it appeals to those kids. As you guys see from my stream, Mario Kart. These kids love Mario Kart. Sonic Mania, stuff like that, which is on all platforms. But it appeals to the whole entire generation right there, guys. Uh <laughs> Fuck children, I'm just joking. You guys are funny chat. But overall, I think the press conference was good. There's a lot of games that I'm interested in and I want to play. I think Sony did a good job showing off these stuff for the, the Japanese market. And I think it's going to help rejuvenize the Japanese market when it comes to console gaming. Um, I actually wish Microsoft would attend Tokyo Show Game Show. Because if Microsoft was there fighting with Sony as well... It would really push the industry a lot farther than it currently is. But I'll leave it at that, guys. I'm definitely going to be talking about more Tokyo Game Show soon. This has been Big here with the Untitled Game Show. Thank you guys for joining me, everybody, on Twitch and on YouTube. I'll be back soon with more, and I'll be streaming again. Later, guys. Later.